Hey, it's Harker from Play. This video is an introduction to pan triggers in play. A pan gesture is when you move your finger from one spot on the screen to another spot on the screen. This is used to create bottom drawers, slide in menus, or interactions where you can drag an object all around your screen. Before we get into the trigger, let's first add an object to our page. So on my page, I have an alignment of center and distribution of center. So this is gonna be right in the middle. When I add my stack to the page using the keyboard shortcut S, you can see it's right in the center of the page. And now we can add some background color to it. And then we can change some of the properties like the width and height, maybe add a little corner radius too. Now that we have this styled, let's go into interaction mode. And on this object, we are going to add a pan trigger. Now we're adding this onto the object that we want the pan to trigger on. So because it's on this object, when I pan up here, this trigger won't fire. But if I pan starting on this object, that's when this pan trigger will fire. The first property in the pan trigger is the state, which is the point in the pan gesture that you want this trigger to fire, thus having all of the actions on it fire. So you can do any, so that's at any point during the pan, or you can trigger it when the pan begins. So that's the second your finger touches down and starts moving. You can do when pan changes. So this is at any point while the user is panning around on the screen, or you can do pan ended, which is the moment that the user lifts their finger after panning. I'm gonna do pan changed for now. Next, you can choose the direction of the pan. So you can choose any direction. So basically that's anywhere on here. You can do up and down, left and right, or just one direction. So for example, a bottom drawer, you'd wanna pan up and then down to close it. Again, we'll do any for right now. Now, before we add any actions to this and create our own pan interaction, I wanna show you that you don't even really need to create this on your own. If we press D to disable this pan trigger, you can look over at our pan prefabs, and we have a lot of them. So let's take this drag around one, for example. I can just drag it and drop it onto this object. Maybe I'll change some of the properties here. Um, and now I can just move that around and it's gonna follow my finger. Whenever I lift my finger up, it's gonna stay in that same position because I turned off snapped to bounds. So you can see we added that in just a second, just by dragging and dropping this one prefab on. But let's talk about how to create that same interaction, actually building it in play. So let's delete this drag around and I'll use the D keyboard shortcut to re-enable our pan trigger. So on this pan trigger, let's add a set property action. And the property we wanna set is the offset X because we wanna move it from the left and the right. We're gonna target self, which is this box, but you could also target something else if you wanted to, while I'm panning on this, move some other object on the screen. The target does not have to be the same object that the interaction is placed on. But in this case, we'll leave it as is. Now, we could just set the value to something like 30. Now, when I pan, you can see it just jumps to 30. It's not following my finger. So instead of doing that, let's reset it and then open the expression editor. Here, we're gonna use a trigger property. So let's type in the trigger, which is pan, and dot to give us a list of all the trigger properties. The one we wanna use here is translation X, which you can see in the description is the horizontal distance of the pan. Let's click on that. And now, as I move side to side, you can see it's following my finger. Let's add a print object or print action too, so that way you can see what the value of this pan translation is. Because while it's great to just move it like this, we sometimes wanna use that pan translation value in other circumstances. So in here, let's write the same thing, pan translate X. Now you can see as I start to pan towards the right, that value is increasing all the way from zero up to around 200 on the right side of the screen. As I start to pan back left, you can see that number continues to decrease back till zero. At the point where I started panning, it's zero. And when I move to the left, I start panning left, it goes to a negative value. Basically the zero point is wherever you put your finger down. Anything to the right of that, positive. Anything to the left will be negative. This is just part one of our introduction to pan video series. Come back for the second video and I'll show you how, when you lift your finger up, we can move this object right back to where we started. Thanks so much for watching this video.